Welcome, 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 everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, Google, turn on the patron panel. When it figures it out. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Am I coming through? Oh, it, it didn't want to turn on the patron panel. I'll do it manually, which is to say I'll do it through the app. Welcome, welcome, everyone. There we go. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Turn the lights up a little bit here. You know what? Let's turn the let's turn the studio lights down. And let's turn my lights up. How is everybody? Studio. Doing good. It's a little bit chilly where I am, but uh, I'm embracing the cold. It's just windy here. Very, very windy. There we go. Yeah, it's very windy here. So happy Thanksgiving to all of my uh, American friends who celebrate. I don't know who else celebrates Thanksgiving on the last Thursday in November, but that's when we do it. And then I just discovered today that Black Friday is a worldwide thing. Apparently, it took off. <clears throat> so, yes, very everyone much. celebrates Black Friday. Yes, and Cyber Monday. I don't know. If and that's Cyber Monday. Yeah. So what do we have for you today? We have people in the studio. We have our whole crew here. Brandon, Joe, and Tactical are all here. Thank you very much for giving us part of your Thanksgiving. Thank Hello. you for joining us for your Thanksgiving audience and viewers. We're doing our comment review and hangout for Thanksgiving today, for Thursday as our video today. So I hope you enjoy hanging out with us. The lawful masses. No, I think they're the, are they the, they're the lawful masses. We're, yeah, we're lawful masses, but they're the lawful men. Is that how that works? I we're don't the know. awful lasses and they're the well, lawful Well, we're the masses. awful lasses in Rocket League, yeah. So I Which think- we're gonna play later, right? I think, yeah, I think this is, well, we can play. Yeah, we can play at the end of the stream if you want, sure. Um, so this is, I think, what we're talking about today is is this, is this the first slide? Did I get it right? The bar battle? Yep, that's the one. All right. So this is the comment review. We're gonna. This is the comment review from what a, a couple days ago. Like, so this does not include yesterday's video, right? This doesn't include this week's videos, does it? No, it includes everything up till uh, Saturday, I think. So it's up to Saturday. So okay. it's it's the previous week's videos, and then we're gonna do another comment review. Like, I don't know. Saturday or Sunday or early next because we don't we're not going to get behind we're gonna we're gonna review all of your comments as as we do so let's start with the bar battle let's see this was the one where the person hadn't received their bar exam results after 30 years because of their own shenaniganery in applying for the bar exam you have to be honest and they weren't showing the required level of honesty let's put it that way this so, one hit so close for me. I was like, oof, when I read so it. So BG6B7BFT says, if you have a law degree, you don't have the ethics or character to qualify for the bar. Oh, but you don't have the ethics or, or character to qualify for the bar. Big, that makes a big difference there. That's a big difference. You can always go into politics. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh, Sam says, how frustrating would it be if they finally approved her character at fitness only to find out she failed the bar and has to retake it? I, I agree that that would be a bit of a tragedy for the whole, you know, the amount of effort and, and, and time that everybody put into the thing. But at least she'll have passed then and probably not have any problems with character and fitness as long as she doesn't screw it up again. That, that would be a big oof, wouldn't it? Like... Now yeah. you have to go take the bar, and it's been 30 years, so maybe you don't even remember the answer to all the questions. Yeah, and sorry. <laughs> all right, so Snow Fur Fox says, congrats, man, the world needs more lawyers like you and less like her. I, I agree. I try, to, I try to be a good, a good one. Gredefi. Gred, Gredfa. I don't know. This case seems like a good example of why the bar exists. My only question is, what does one have to do in order to be permanently enjoined from taking the bar exam? I don't know, probably 
further acts of dishonesty, it's not that they're going to like issue a permanent injunction enjoining you from taking the bar exam. What they're going to do is just deny you every time you apply. And you're probably paying the application fee when you're doing that. Yeah, I think so. How many times can you take it? I mean, there's a there's like a waiting period after you fail it, right? And then I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Could be. Yeah. Uh, here is the prisoner who says that he served his life sentence by dying, and that's prison Mike in the background. I sure hope I don't get a copyright strike from anyone involved with the office. The hurricane says he seeks to resurrect. <laughs> that was a, yeah, that was good. Whether whether or not the judge meant it or not, that was good. Uh, that was good wording. Bro Fox, Bro Fox, Bro Fox says, isn't this why they put you in jail for 120 years instead of saying life in prison or similar long times? I, I think it's more so just common sense. I don't think judges are going to let people out of jail on like that kind of technicality, like technicalities that are that are recognized by the courts or by the Constitution. Great. But this isn't a technicality that's recognized as like a Fourth Amendment violation or anything. I don't even know. Something jo 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 Jova Sanctus Unus says, I mean, I would have tried to, what are they going to do, jail him? Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's got not, he doesn't have a whole lot of better options, does he? I, I guess, though, if he did reform himself and become, like, a decent person in prison, maybe at some point a parole board would consider letting him out. Probably not. Like if he's Decent gonna... people in prison? I mean, they don't provide the right programs and rehabilitation for people to there become good people. There are lots and lots and lots of people who who make themselves better people in prison. We have to give people the opportunity to make themselves better. Well, that part was sarcasm. But what I'm saying is is that is that prison is supposed to be a rehabilitation center, but they almost they do almost nothing to help people actually rehabilitate themselves. Um, I, this you is know part what? of the problem with our system. I agree that that is the stereotype, or that is the that is what what the public more or less expects. But I I hesitate to think that that's a universal truth, and we should probably investigate, do our due diligence before we assume that every prison is like that. I'm, all, right. I'm I'm sure that many prisons are like that, that are terrible prisons. Um, others, I, I know lots of people. I don't mean like I know personally lots of people. I just remember reading over the years of lots of people who came out of prison better than they went in, you know, somewhat rehabilitated or, or actually completely reformed. Uh, again, not everybody, but you have to give people that opportunity. I'm sure it varies a lot on the prison as well and, and how it's run and who is actually behind it and what funding they can get and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just want to be clear that I didn't mean to say that everybody in prison is a bad person. That wasn't what I was trying to say. I wasn't accusing it was sarcasm. you. I wasn't accusing you. I was defending the the idea, not not something Brandon, you know, I wasn't attacking something Brandon yeah, said. Yeah. Uh, so the next one says blur, 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 blur. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Ann Davis says, ah, yes, the old Jon Snow gambit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dying and coming back. Speaking of my dogs, where are my dogs? Natasha Taylor says, this is one of those cases where it's like, I can see where you're coming from, but that's not how any of this works. Yeah, I, 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 ho I, I hope he knew it was a long shot. I don't, I don't know that I... I mean, I, I'm an intelligent person who probably won't end up in jail because I don't expect to commit any crimes that are jailable offenses. Um, but I don't see how he could expect that this would actually work so much as he's just clogging the courts because what else is he going to do? He's stuck in prison for the rest of his life. Awesome Saint Cool says, if the guy actually had a DNR order and they resuscitated him, that's like malpractice, isn't it? Yes, some kind of something. It's got to be some kind of claim. Maybe it doesn't get him off of his his, his imprisonment or something. But what 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 do you do? Do you give a monetary award to a prisoner who's never going to get out of prison? How does that work? 
Does he just have a lot of commissary for the rest of his Maybe prison? Commissary, I guess. <laughs> that, yeah. Million dollars yeah. in commissary. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, can I mention something actually here that, that that's really interesting? Yeah. Um, Uh-oh. if you have not seen season six of Game of Thrones, um, you should probably mute for the next forty-five seconds or so. Um, but. In in Game of Thrones, Jon Snow has an oath to the Night's Watch that he that he will serve them until he dies, until mm-hmm. his life ends, and then he dies. Um, right. So his oath is served. <laughs> his oath is served. So when he gets revived, they're all like, "Oh, oh, our 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 commander's back," and he's like, "Nah, dude, I'm done." And he like takes off his I, coat yeah, and just leaves. I don't think the law <laughs> is worded like that. If the law was worded so strictly like that, you know, because remember hangings. The wording for hanging was you, 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 you know, sentenced to be hung until dead. Like, that's what a hanging was supposed to be. So, yeah, if there was some language that said you're to serve a prison sentence until a coroner officially declares you dead. And then if the, you somehow are alive after that, well, yeah, go to court and say, hey, the coroner declared me dead. But I would think that the law would be written differently than that. And the judges didn't seem to be swayed by it either. But yeah, not observing a do not resuscitate order is definitely some kind of violation of uh, it's some kind of malpractice or it's some kind of something. I, I would almost call it a- assault, basically, because the person yeah. has said, like, at this point, when when everybody agrees that I'm in need of resuscitation, don't. Like, you're not allowed to touch me anymore. Don't. I, f- I feel like there was an episode of, like, ER or something that I watched in which it was considered assault to provide medical care. I would argue it. If I was had... a plaintiff's attorney, I would argue it. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Judges bite off more than they can chew. Oh, yeah. My goodness. I, I keep picturing, like, my local White Castle and, like, those judges hanging out in front of the White Castle at two o'clock in the morning and getting into a fight with some car passing by. That's exactly how it would happen. It's a main road. People are are either drunk or just the wrong kind of people. And you yell something at somebody and you're going to, somebody's looking for a fight and you found a fight and, and it's two o'clock. So the White Castle's closed now. And so you're just all hanging out outside the White Castle and you don't like each other. So what happens? I think I actually ordered White Castle the next day. (laughs) Nice. King's Rook says, an interesting tidbit, the first impeachment in U.S. history was of a chronically drunk judge. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Halo inverse, a physical conflict between judges counts as a bar brawl, doesn't it? Nice. Uh, of course, uh-huh. I have to point out that this was not a physical conflict between judges. It was a physical con- t- conflict with the judges, between the judges and the uh, people who were driving by. Astaroth K says, in other news, judges completely misunderstand castle doctrine, get taunted a second time. <laughs> <laughs> White castle. Nice. Nice. The White Castle Doctrine. The White Castle Doctrine. Oh, my God. We missed an opportunity. It could have been called the White Castle Doctrine. The the video could have been called the White Castle Doctrine. We missed an opportunity. TTMR86 says, Nope, never made the gesture, not once while I'm live streaming. I think this is. I think this might be in reference to the time that I was driving back from the Leibowitz hearing and gave some gave some driver the finger who was sitting in the left lane. Like you know what I mean. You got three or sometimes even four lanes to pass people, and in this case there were three lanes and you got two cargo trucks, like big semi cargo trucks, just sitting in the two left lanes, just hogging them up so everybody who wants to pass has to undertake them, and that's illegal. You're not supposed to undertake. So everybody who wants to get past these two slow trucks has to undertake and they're not passing each other they're just sitting there hogging up the left two lanes they're not going by and and getting back in the lane nothing they're not even moving like half an eye like i know trucks are slow they can move slow so maybe they're just taking their time getting past nope they're just sitting there hogging the lane and everybody who wants to pass has to go all the way over to the right lane and undertake which we're not supposed to do so i gave him the finger sorry 
Sorry, not sorry. Rational. You don't seem that sorry. <laughs> Rational Bushcraft says, look, it is not a conference until you have a two plus blood alcohol uh, content and someone gets shot. Yeah, I bet you that put a damper on the party, didn't it? It wasn't a party, but I bet you put a damper on the party, huh? Anybody who was happy about being at that conference is probably not as happy as they were the day before. Kara Han says, the beginning of a new hit movie, dude, where's my gavel? Y yeah, actually, I, I think I think maybe I'll ask certain friends of mine to see, uh, you know, not now, but a couple years down the road when we're even better at this video and filming thing. Uh, maybe we should make this one, write this out into a fun story and, and make, make like a reenactment of the judges getting into a fight and getting shot. I, I, I would do it. That'd be fun. Bab Queen says, not going to lie, I only clicked because of the sick hat. Where can I buy a hat like that? Uh, which hat? I forget which hat it was. Let's go back. I think that was the captain's hat. See, I don't even know where that was bought. Yeah, that's the captain's hat. That was given to us by Joshua Davis. Thank you very much, Joshua Davis, for the unexpected gift. That is a beautiful hat. Um, I have it sitting here. I can show you a better... <coughs> show you a, a better uh, picture of it here. So this is this is the captain's hat. It is absolutely beautiful. It is, you know, in the style of, or it is a real captain's hat. It even has the, and you know, the leather band on the inside and it does fit. I have to like make it like, like it's, it's not, it's not even the wrong size. Like he didn't even ask for my size and he got it right. So uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be more snug than that, but it's uh, snug enough. I could probably lose it if I was doing like military exercises. So maybe it's supposed to be a, a, a bit smaller if you're in the military. I'm running over my Xbox cord. Hang on, my Xbox controller cord. We don't like to run those over. We like we like those things to work for Rocket League. King's Rook says no. I'm kidding. I know. I'm going back. This was my, one of my favorites, Pretty Woman, Ugly Man. We actually licensed that image. We licensed the uh, distracted boyfriend meme, which is not called that. It's called something else. I would have to look. Um, but we licensed it for $10 because I wanted to be compliant. Frederick Martin says, a dating contract where one party spends money in exchange for the other being in a relationship just sounds like prostitution with extra steps. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, that's what the guy wanted. He wanted a prostitute. Um, crap, I'm on YouTube. I can't say that word anymore. We're probably already demonetized. That's what he wanted. He, he wanted. he wanted a person to take care of him and he didn't want to have to be a relationship partner. I don't think he understood what it means to be a relationship partner. Would you like to come hop? Oh, I guess you would like to come hop, huh? Yeah? Yeah, should I copy the slideshow over here? Let's see, copy. Slideshow, paste. Okay. Yeah, I just got to say, like, if you feel obligated to be in a relationship, then it's not oh, take me with you. a relationship. Ilsa, would you like to come hop? Come on, hop. Good girl. All right, Nico. Come on back, hop. Come on, hop. You can hang out with me while we do the comment review. No, you're going to hang out with me. I'm going to keep you here. I'm going to capture you. And you're not going to be allowed to leave. I'll, um, I'll lower myself a little bit so you're not so uncomfortable. Don't get scared. It's okay. Patent Dude says, I can't imagine why he has trouble finding a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, duh. <laughs> you, if you treat people like objects, I mean, they're not going to feel like people, are they? Hi. I, so here, I'm the opposite. I treat dogs like people. Dog, dogs aren't property. I'm, I'm a guardian, and I'm, I'm here to take care of him and give him a good life, and in return, he'll give me dog love. Yeah, I mean, there are some people in this world that I don't treat as well as I treat every single dog I meet. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Yeah. But we can, you sort of automatically know that dogs aren't malicious. But then, you know, you can, you can translate it a little bit and you can try to remind yourself that people don't start out malicious. They get that way after a long time of, of not getting what they need. Basically training, just like a dog. Yeah. People don't get trained properly and then they get frustrated with not being able to interact with society properly. That's how it actually works. Oh, are we, what are we doing? Oh, oh, he was pressing his nose up against my arm. It was cute, but I missed it. By the way, and that is not a stain on the back of his chair. That is a burrito blanket. The mysterious burrito <laughs> blanket. That showed yes, up. the mysterious burrito blanket. Yes, this is supposed to look like a tortilla, basically. Um, and I use it with a green screen because then it doesn't reflect the green. And so it, it cuts out nicely. Canned Kitty says, this guy is the epitome of a nice guy schmuck. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of Reddit slash nice guys uh, and nice girls uh, the, the, during that episode. Um, this is just not the way you treat people. Like, that, uh, I, you know, if in, in case anyone doesn't know, you know, here's some helpful tips. Uh, people like to be treated like people. They like to be treated like they have value and worth just on their own, like as people without having to be assigned a value by, you know, first contributing to the relationship in a financial sense or, or in the, um, the word I can't say sense. So treat them like people. I mean, there's nothing more romantic than like a contract and a relationship if you're both lawyers. But. Yeah, I mean, I distinctly remember the few <laughs> times where I've I've said to someone like, "But I did the thing you wanted to do. Now you have to have sex with me." That does what well, didn't come out very romantic, did it? It didn't sound very partnery. It didn't sound very loving. It sounded more like just service me, you know? It's like it's like creepy and disgusting. And I think you want to acknowledge the autonomy of the other person where if they can't say no to you and they can't leave and they're trapped, yeah. then them yeah. staying doesn't oh. mean anything. This is a really good point. Thank you, Tactical. Um, when, when, when you love something, set it free. You ever wonder what that means? It, it means that, that real love or, or you know, real feelings and all that they, they, they you don't need to be forced. Like a person who really loves you and really cares about you isn't going to need to be reminded or contracted or obligated. A person might be distracted. It's certainly possible to be in a loving relationship and have somebody, you know, get distracted by stuff. But at some point there, there's there's you realize that the person doesn't actually care about you. They're they're just there for themselves. They're, they're gaining a benefit in their relationship and you're providing one. Sometimes it's just codependency. I can't say I've never been codependent. I kind of know what that's like. Um, but other times it's just a person, you know, people, people, people have needs and they try to get their needs fulfilled. Sometimes those needs are being in a relationship. Sometimes those needs are the intimacy of a relationship or the sexuality of a relationship. Um, sometimes it's the status of a relationship, just feeling like you're not that person who doesn't have anybody, you're always the third wheel. At least you've got somebody. Uh, I think that's how my first marriage worked out. I think my, my ex really just wanted to be with somebody and then they'll have the stability of marriage instead of thinking about how maybe it's first stable people deciding to get into a married relationship. That, that's, that's how real working, sustainable relationships and marriages work out. It's not that the marriage made them stable. You know, that's a story for another time. The Squire of Gotho says the low point was when the ex pointed to the man's crotch and said their love life was a matter for small claims court. Ah, that's good. That's oh a good one. I like it. Gosh. I like it. Ah. <sighs> Dorby says, what court should this be in? Only Judge Judy can do this case justice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously, she'd, she'd have them hugging, like. I No, no, I don't think she would do that to the woman who has been the victim of this man. I mean, it's and let's be, yeah. let's be, let's be, this, this can go both ways, but a lot of times I hear about it, it's a wealthy man who is 
doing their level-headed best to buy the services of a younger female, usually younger female. Um, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in that scenario, at some point, the person who's trying to have, like, a little bit of a friendly relationship and maybe try out an intimate relationship, uh, you know, they start to... It's not to be the victim of this guy. I don't mean like they're a completely unknowing victim or, uh, you know, a not culpable at all. Maybe some unclean hands applies, but, uh, oh, bad phrasing. But, uh, you know, they've, they're some kind of a, of a victim. TJ Sincrol says, let's appreciate for the moment that Kevin Dwight, a high profile attorney, th thought a photograph of a handshake would be acceptable evidence of a verbal contract and included this on a complaint he signed. Haven't attorneys been sanctioned for less? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would, I would, this, the, the, the filing just left so much to be desired that it really did not leave a good impression of its drafters. And you never want to do that. You all, I mean, even if your filing is a bad one, even Richard Leibowitz's filing about I'm not a copyright troll, please recuse yourself, judge, was well written and passionately written and, and sincerely written. This was not. This was, this was a lawyer who let the client write something and then left in a bunch of stuff because that'll make the client happy. That doesn't enforce and that doesn't uh, respect the lawyer's duties as an officer of the court. The lawyer is supposed to also be acting in accordance with the rules and spirit of the court and that document was not. That document was obviously meant to harass the ex-girlfriend which is just still mind-bottling it's like I'm in a glass case of emotions. So I think that there were a couple comments asking about sanctions. Now, a judge sanctioning an attorney for filing a lawsuit is very rare in my understanding. That that's not a, a um, common thing to have happen. It's not common, no. No, most, well, most attorneys are smart enough not to file things that could warrant sanctions. I could see it happening. That appeal brief, for example. Remember the appeal brief that was so bad that the judge is considering sanctions? Yeah, let's never do that. <laughs> Lafille Abriel says what we're all thinking, ow, my brain. Red box, who won? We still don't know. Quirky Pineapple Sauce says it takes a year, I think it was more than a year, of legal battle to come out with, hey, bro, can you stop selling our codes? Yeah, sure, man, I got you. It was actually worse than that. The judge had to more or less tell Disney, you know, you're using your language, your contract language wrong. If this said this, then we'd be able to enforce it. And then Disney changed it. And guess what? That was the end of the case, basically. And it just took them a little over a year to come to terms with it. I guess these are just these are just stubborn people who so, someone doesn't have to be everybody. I don't want to blame every party or automatically assume it was Disney. Uh, I, I personally don't like Disney and their practices very much. So, you know, yes, I have a little bit of a bias against Disney, but and I'm happy to say it, too. It was I've not had a good experience with 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 Disney. I find them to be extraordinarily greedy, like way more greedy than they need to be. Like they could have all the stuff that they have and not be this greedy. Like they don't, they just, it's just not necessary. So at this point, that's just power. That's just somebody who wants power, not even money. Like they've got the money. They're going to get more money. Like the company's fine. Like there's no reason to be this greedy. So yeah, they, they, they were upset about the selling of the codes. Fine. They got the codes stop. And then they proceeded through another 13 or 14 months of legal or litigation. Why? So they figured it out eventually. It just took 14 months. Snake Dude for Life says, The Cynic, we all lost. The Ego, Disney won. The Realist, Redbox won. The Common Man, huh, neat. The Doggos, human play with me, I good boy. He didn't even lift his head. He didn't even lift his head. That's his, I don't, you can't even see that's his butt back there. 
That's his dog butt back there. Didn't lift his head. Didn't even lift his head. Lexington73300 says, This is the first crack in the wall of the first sale doctrine that will eventually destroy the used media market and a lot of other used markets. Uh, sort of, yeah, yeah. We're concerned that digital first sale doesn't exist. Judges have said that a digital copy does not degrade, and so you can't treat it the same as like a vinyl or a tape or a CD or a DVD, all of which have lifespans and all of which will degrade and have to be copied onto new media and all that. And in copying, the analog to analog copying will lose something and you will not get an exact copy, whereas digital is different. So there's something to that at the same time. Wow, I, I just don't know how you could just extinguish the entire first sale doctrine because things went onto the internet. That's like, does anybody remember the early 2000s when it was like business patents were just like something we do in real life? We're now going to do on the internet. Patent pending. It seems like uh, the file format certainly change. I mean, things do change in technology. And so being able to convert from one format to another format seems like it should be under that, right? Um, like to convert formats, sure, but to sell. So, so like, it, let's say yeah. that I buy a song on iTunes, 128 kilobits AAC and 15 years, or we can make it extreme. We can go 150 years later. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm living, I'm going to live forever now because we found the technology. So 150 years later, I'm like, hey, Joe wants my vintage, because you did this too, like you're going to live forever too. So Joe wants my, my iTunes track from 150 years ago. He's willing to pay 99 cents for it, which is worth like nothing, right? A dollar like now is worth like a million dollars then. So like it's worth like, a, you know, a millionth of a dollar. And so he wants to buy it. Am I allowed to do that? Well, I don't know. That's what the first sale doctrine should protect, but I bought a digital copy, which is not protected the same way because it's digital, because it's perpetual. I, I, I mm. personally feel like I should be able to resell that, and so does Larry Rudolph at Redigi, but uh, no, no court has ever agreed with that sentiment. Not, not in the U.S. Other courts, yes. Other courts, other places have said that there's some kind of right to first sale. I think there's something somewhere, but in the U.S., nothing absolutely nothing and Larry Rudolph tried it with Redigi and it did not work. He even went up to appeals court I believe and he was not successful. Wow. I met Larry too, very passionate. Um, I was at a copyright conference in in New York City and there were lots of like major media representatives, re representatives and Larry and I were some of the least favorite people in the room because I was the piracy defense attorney and he was the first sale doctrine, digital first sale doctrine guy. Um, Paul Allen from Public Citizen was there. Paul Allen Levy, he's amazing, absolutely amazing. Shook his hand, introduced myself, love the guy, would go see him again. I think I saw him twice now. Um, I would like pay money to go see him speak. He's so good. The real Mr. Roboto says, so it's Captain French is giving out law readings again? When is Captain French going to give us a reading of maritime law? Like all of it, you just you just want me to go like open the the, the U.S. code and uh, and the code of federal regulations and start just like feeding you maritime law? Sure. Didn't you read a pirate law book at a hundred or at fifty thousand subs? Isn't that I think we that read a pirate book, public domain, like it was just a pirate story book. Oh, I, still I thought have it, it was pirate law. No, it wasn't pirate law. Oh, sad. Roland St. Germain says, never trust mice in suits. I, I agree. If I saw a mouse in a suit, I would not trust it. I would think, why is that mouse in a suit? I'm suspicious. Elon Musk goes to trial. He can stick his submarine where it hurts. <laughs> I love this story. I cannot believe that Elon Musk is act, is acting like this, that he is, I mean, I, I can believe that a human being would do it. Like, yeah, I can definitely believe that human beings can be this low, but like, come on, this is like the pettiest of fights and he's having it out in public in front of everybody and it makes no sense. And, and can I say again, I was right. 
I was right. I was the one who said, this is going to trial. This is defamation per se. And look what's going to trial. Defamation per se. Noise the Silent says, kid in a candy shop. Ooh, candy. Lettered with new words. Ooh, new word. Yeah, obliquy. Obliquy was the word, I believe. Gabrielle Bad Wolf says, the hat that hat is the most disturbing thing I've seen since... Oh, that hat is the most disturbing thing I've seen someone do to a turkey in a long time. That's, uh, that's the turkey hat in the background there. I am uh, stuffing myself into the turkey hat. Uh, break, break time. We have dog break again. Do you want to come hop? Dog break. Do you want to come hop? Or dog do you, break do you now only come hop if you see a treat? You now only come hop if you see a treat, huh? Is that what we do now? Is that what we've have we reduced ourselves to this? Come up, come up, and then I'll give you a treat. How about that? Maybe you don't have to see the reward before I give it to you. Come on, Pavlov. Come on, hop. Come on. Is he Pavlov's come. dog? Go boy. I knew you would do it. I knew you would do it, and you knew you would get a treat because you're a go boy. Because you're a go boy. Oh, and you're just gonna respond, and and. Ilsa's back there just responding. There you go. You get a treat, too. He didn't do anything for it, though. He jumped up without needing a treat. Rrr. All right. He really didn't want to jump, though, did he? He was like, no. <laughs> just going to rest my head here. Mitch Ver. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Nico has something to say. <laughs> Do you want another one? A little, a little piece. I'll give you a little piece. Okay. There you go. You got a little piece. Yeah. Do you want to talk to us some more? Mm. You good boy? Are you a nice, relaxed, good boy? Hmm? Do we need to focus the camera a little bit because I bumped it yesterday? Oh, why can't I focus? Oh, because my, my why is my lens in manual, in, in automatic mode? There we go. No, that is, oh, I'm in the, I'm the it's not, not even in the camera. I screwed up my other lens, my other one now. Good job, Leonard. Yeah, see, now everything's gonna be blurry. Look at that. <laughs> He went to law school. I went to law school, guys. Yes, I don't know how to operate cameras. Uh, writes an email to a journalist. Journalist prints the email. Claim, of course, I'm, I'm too hot now. Claim, but I, but how was I to know the journalist would print it? I said, off the record, so I thought they couldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he prints, he, he writes off the record in his email to a journalist, and uh, he thinks that they're going to observe that. No, no, it's only if you have an agreement, a two-way agreement to be off the record. This, this, this dog is insisting on pets while we are, um, while we're doing this. Johan MDK says some people should really stay off Twitter. Yes, I agree. Elon Musk should like save his drafts and then have his social media person decide whether it was a good idea to write that draft and send it. Or not Isn't he supposed it. to as part of like an agreement with right or something? Yeah, yeah he's supposed, supposed to do that to if he yeah. if he writes it about financial stuff about a company or something, right? Yeah. Krillin six, have you ever worn one of those hats that clap when you pull a string? No, no, but I'm going to order one right now. Where where do you get such a hat? I'm assuming Amazon. Clapping hat. Uh, no, I don't immediately see one. Oh, we have to find one of these. Okay. Well, we will work on that some other time. Outfoxed. Use obliquy in a sentence. I learned what obliquy means today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's my luck. I would go look it up in the dictionary and it would have like a new word and I would look it up and it would say, uh, you know, use this word in a sentence. Uh, I learned what the word means. <laughs> Cute. 
Zerky Sigma, I fear inappropriate use of my massive vocabulary may bring about obloquy. There you go. See? That's how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> That's a proper recursive uh, self-referencing definition or usage. This is Leibowitz, excuse all the lies. Yep, yep. He uh, he really wants, he has all the excuses for his lies. Inerith, why does it still sound like while trying to dig himself out, he's still digging himself in deeper? I, I agree, but what else was the lawyer going to say? They didn't have anything to say. He he was like so obviously guilty of, of, of lying to the judge that there was nothing to say. So the lawyer wants to do something. He can't just show up and do nothing and be like, yeah, judge, we already know. Just give it to us. He's got to say something. So that's that's what happens. Lawyers make noises. Adam Gossel says, Leibowitz files 2,000 cases. Attorneys, he's too inexperienced. <laughs> yes, yes, I think he's too inexperienced to know that he shouldn't have filed 2,000 cases and that if he's going to file cases at all, he has to comply with his duties of, uh, let's see, um, competency is rule 1-1. One, one. Rule 3-3 three, three is candor to the judge and the, and, the, and the court. Honesty is also in rule 3-3 three, three there. So that's just two of them right off the bat that he didn't seem to understand. Alan Kelly says, so his practice now has 12 employees, including two other lawyers, and apparently all of them experienced a brief period of grief and dysfunction as nobody bothered to pick up the ball when the boss fumbled. Quality staff. Yep, I agree. I would hope that my staff would, would pick it up if I, so, uh, if, 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 I, if I had such a... Uh, a lapse, but hopefully we don't have such a lapse in judgment because we have better judgment. Yes. We have the best judgment in the world. We have the best judgment. All right, so what are we doing now? Um, Rocket League? We could do some Rocket League. We'll um, hang out yeah. with our people on chat. I'll stick uh, chat up in my face here, and I can chat with my peoples. So, chat, we thought just this once, since it's a special occasion, it's a holiday, maybe we would just chill with you guys and play some Rocket League on stream? Would that be okay? Oh, hey, I see Super Chats. Oh, yes, let's go through those. Robert Mail, $5, getting paid overtime and holiday pay to watch YouTube today. Here's a small percentage of it. By the way, Oracle is suing the Department of Labor for executive overreach. Oh, we'll check that one out. Somebody put that one in the stories folder. Fukai Kokoro, $5. Wow, crazy. YouTube gave me four free super chats to support people that deserve it. Love the content. Very interesting. Keep up the amazing work. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate it. You know, that giving free super chats out is actually a really good idea because that would keep us coming back too because we know that you have some money to give us if you like what we're doing. That's a cool idea, actually. Grunkle Tiro gives $2.99 and gives a fist bump. Well, right back at you. John Swanson gives $2. Love your videos, Leonard. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now let's see here. Live chat. Pop out chat. We're going to put chat up here. We're going to start. So I guess someone, someone who actually plays Rocket League and was just watching our video was like, yes, Rocket League, because his name on YouTube is uh, Rocket League Nonsense. So I guess he was just watching us <laughs> nice. for, the, for the legal analysis. And he's like, hell nice. yeah. Legal and Rocket League? Let's do it. Yeah. Maybe All I can right. talk about my uh, my YouTube situation while we're playing Rocket League. Let's do it. Uh, before we do that, let me just say thank you to our supporters. We do have supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. Our $50 plus supporters get read onto the uh, outros, like, like right here for the video. So thank you to Joe Tyson, Aspernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez. Perez, Snorre W, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, and Steven. Thank you to Matthew Beller for the $5. Matt is a good friend of mine. Um, he's my ex's brother, and I got the better part of that relationship. So Matt's a great guy. I hope you're doing well, Matt. Matt uh, drives uh, drives truck, and um, so he could be any place. I don't know if you're home for, for the holidays or if you're driving for the holidays, but... Uh, 
Uh, love to hear from you and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, Matt. All right, so let's play some Rocket League. So I've got to do 